Hello everyone, welcome to another segment of Intellectual Transforming and uh, Academic Excellence. My name is David Oni, and my YouTube channel is David Oni Wiz, that is David Oni Wiz, David Oni Wiz, that's my YouTube channel, and um, you can um, leave your comment on our channel. You can also click on the notification button so that when we bring uh, up any other video, you can be one of those that will first receive such uh, videos. Then apart from that, you can um, you know leave your comments. It will go a long way in helping us. And also, don't forget to click on the like uh, button. Today, we are going to look at something different under the government. And we are going to look at government. We are going to look at uh, government. And today we are looking at what we call federalism. Federalism, or you can say federal system of a uh, government. Federal system of of government. Federal system of a uh, government. Federal system of a government. A lot of people are having difficulty in defining what is a federal system. In this topic, we're going to define what we mean by a federal system. We're going to expand on it, and apart from that, we're going to look at the characteristics of a federal system of government. When we are done with that, we now look at the reason for a federal system of government. They will now consider what we call the advantages of federal system of government. They will now look at what we call the disadvantages of federal system of government. And lastly, we're going to look at how powers are shared under a federal system of uh, government. So stay tuned as we start uh, now. So what is uh, a federal system of government? Let us quickly define it. A federal system of government can be defined as a system where governmental powers powers that exist in a country are shared among the central government and shared between the central government that represent, represent the whole country, whole country, and the component unit, and the component unit, and the component unit. Or states and the component unit or states, thereby making each government to be independent. And uh, autonomous. Yeah, so this is the definition of a federal system of government. Now, let us quickly look at the definition of a federal system of government. We said a federal system of government can be defined as a system where governmental powers. In every state, there is always a governmental power. So, what we're saying is that what makes a state of function is the element of uh, power. 
without power, the state cannot uh, function. So, where the governmental power that exists in a country are shared. So, the powers are actually shared among the central government that represent the whole country and the component units of state, thereby making each government to be independent and what and they autonomous. By this definition, we are talking about what we call true federalism. We are referring to what we call true federalism. True federalism. True federalism. By true federalism, we are saying that the governmental powers that exist in the state are shared between the component units and the central government that represent the whole country. And in other words, each of them are independent of each other. That is what the definition is talking about there. So under true federalism, there is what we call resource control. Resource control. What we mean by that is that the component units have the freedom or independence on the autonomy to control their own uh, resources. So there's a facility that is given to the federal system or to the central government at a particular period of uh, time. So that is true federalism. Then we also have what we call quasi-federalism. When you are talking about quasi-federalism, it means that the component units are not totally free. They are not totally independent or they are not totally or completely autonomous. So that is quasi-federalism. So there's a difference between true federalism and quasi-federalism. So what we're saying is that in a federal system of government, powers are shared between the center and the component uh, state or the component uh, unit. Now, there are some countries that are adopting this system. An example of such country is uh, Nigeria. Nigeria is an example of a country adopting federalism. Germany is also an example of a country adopting federalism. The United States of America is also a, an example of a country adopting federalism. Now let us now quickly look at the characteristics of federalism. Characteristics of uh, federalism. Characteristics of uh, federalism. Characteristics of uh, federalism. Characteristics of federalism. Characteristics of uh, federalism. Characteristics of federalism. Number one, powers are shared. Powers are shared between the center, between the center and the component state, between the center, the center and the component uh, state. That's number one. Number two, constitutional repudiation, constitutional repudiation, Of secession, constitutional repudiation of secession. Number two, rigidity of the constitution, rigidity of the constitution. Number four, rigidity of the constitution, adoption of a written constitution. Adoption of a written constitution. Number five. Number five. Judicial interpretation. Judicial interpretation and uh, review. And the uh, review. Judicial interpretation and the uh, review. Number six, exclusive list, exclusive list is reserved, reserved for the center, from the center, for the center. Number two, number seven, 
the sigma is shared between the center and the component unit. Number eight, adoption of bicameral legislature. Adoption of bicameral legislature. Then number nine, concurrent is result for both the center and the component unit. Component of units. So we've given nine characteristics of uh, federalism. Let us quickly look at them one after the other. Number one, powers are shared between the center and the component unit. We've discussed that before. We said power are shared between the center and the component unit, thereby making each unit to be independent and uh, autonomous. Then number two, constitutional repudiation of uh, secession. That is, the, a federal system of government does not allow for a breakaway. It does not encourage for a secession. And that is one of the reasons why Nigeria went into war in 1967 to 1970. Because of what? Because of the threat of a secession. So federalism does not allow for secession. Number three, liberty of the constitution. The constitution is always cumbersome. It's very, very difficult to amend under a federal constitution or under a federal system of a government. Then number four, adoption of what? Of a written constitution. What is a written constitution? A written constitution is the body of rules and regulation, precept, conditions, tradition, customs, according to which a what society is operated, but is written what in a single document. When you talk about that, you're referring to what? To a written constitution. So a written constitution is written in a single document. That is a written constitution. Number five, judicial interpretation and the review. What we're saying here is that the judiciary has a right, it has the capacity, capacity to declare the actions of the government as being non avoid or, or constitutional or unconstitutional. That is what we're talking about there. So the judiciary is independent under a federal constitution or on, under a federal system of a government. Then, what, then we have what we call exclusive list. The exclusive list under the federal system of government is reserved only for the center. The center does not share power with the component state or the component unit under the exclusive uh, list. Then number seven, the civil list is shared between the center and the component unit. What we're saying here is that both of them do in most cases share power in this regard in order to make the center not to look uh, weak. So in most countries, under the residual list, the power is also shared between the center and the component states. Then, number eight, adoption of a bicameral legislature. What do we mean by that? By adoption of a bicameral legislature, we're talking about the existence of two legislative chambers in the country. That is, the upper house and the lower house. Upper house and the lower house under the federal system of the government. Then, number nine, Concurrent list is reserved for both the center and the component uh, unit. So under the concurrent list, the central government and the component unit of the state also share power in this uh, regard. So those are the characteristics of a federal system of a government. Now let us now quickly look at what we call reasons for federal system of government. Reasons for centers federal system of government reasons for federal system of government reasons 
So what are the reasons? Number one, reasons for federalism. Number one, fear of domination. Fear of domination. Fear of domination. Number two, tribal differences. Tribal differences. Number three, protection of minority rights. Minority rights. Number four, to bring the government. Nearer to the people. Number five, to provide employment opportunities. Number six, for diverse laws to be made for diverse laws to be made number seven for security reasons for security reasons now number eight for Political stability. Number nine, economic of scale advantage. Economic of scale advantage. Number ten, for faster and even development for faster and even development so here we have given 10 reasons for the adoption of a federal system of government let us quickly look at them one after the other fear of domination one of the reasons why federalism is adopted in a country is as a result of the fear of domination the fear of one ethnic group Dominating another ethnic group will lead a country to adopt a federal system of a government. Then tribal differences. A country where people share different tribal languages, origin, customs, tradition, you will discover that word that it is, it is imperative for such a country to adopt a federalism. Then also in a country where there is a large demarcation between the majority and the minority. It is better for such a country to adopt a federal system of a government so that the interest of the minority will be protected. Then I want to bring the government nearer to the people. Of course, you know that under federalism, you have the federal government, you have the state government, and you also have what? The local government. By creating what? A local government, it will make the government to come to the grassroots, to be nearer to the people at the grassroots. Then um, number five, to provide employment opportunity. As a result of the duplication of governmental offices, employment opportunities are created under a federal system of a government. For diverse laws to be made, when diverse laws are what are made, it will protect the interests of what of every ethnic group in the society without any form of a exemption. Then security reasons. The need for to have a stronger union or to have a stronger government, or to protect the interests of the country or sovereignty, we prompt a country to adopt what we call the what a federal system of government. Then number eight, for political stability. When there is what a federal system of government, you discover that there is always a political stability because all the divergent interests in the country are protected at the end of the day. Then number nine, economic or scale advantage. In a country where federalism is adopted, 
they will always produce goods on the larger scales. And what does that mean? It will create what we call economic of scale advantage, thereby providing what? More foreign exchange for the country. Then number 10, for faster and even development. We discovered that, that in a country where there is a federalism, there is always faster and even development in the country. Because why? All hands are put on deck and all the areas in the country are always developing at the same time. So, these are the reasons for federalism. Number one, fear of domination. Two, travel differences. Three, protection of minority rights. Then number four, to bring the dominion to the people. Number five, to provide more employment opportunity. Number six, for diverse laws to be made. And number seven, for security reasons. Number eight, for political stability. Number nine, economic of scale advantage. And number ten, for faster and economic uh, development. So, and even development. So now let us now quickly look at the advantages of federalism. Advantages of federalism. So when the country adopts federalism, what are the advantages that the country will get by adopting federalism? Advantages of federalism. Advantages. Prevention of dictatorship number two faster economic development number three political unity. Unity. Number four, protection of minority rights. Number five, economic or skill advantage. Economic of scale advantages. Number six. Adoption of the rule of law. Number seven. Protection of human rights. Human rights. Protection of human rights. Number eight, faster and uh, even development. Number nine, it brings the government closer to the people. allows for checks and uh, balances. So let's talk in this uh, number 10. So what are the advantages of uh, federalism? We said number one, prevention of a dictatorship. That is, in a unity system of government, there is the concentration of power in the central government. But under federalism, it is not like that. So federalism works or to help we help to, to prevent the act of dictatorship or an authoritarian regime in a country. Then faster economic development, a country that adopts a federalism because of the advantage of a economic of scale, we discovered that the, the country that adopts federalism where we what we grow faster, we have faster economic development. Then there's always what we call political unity. Because diverse interest group are, what, are protected at the end of the day, we discovered out that there's always political unity. Then protection of minority rights, we mentioned that one. Then number five, we mentioned that one also, economic or scale advantage, that is the country will produce goods and services on a larger scale. The adoption of the rule of law, under a federal system of government, the rule of law is always what, predominant because 
the government, whether the central or the state or the company limits, they are deriving their word, their power from the constitution, then protection of minority rights, because this is possible because of what? Because of the independence of the judiciary and the supremacy of the constitution. Then by a faster and even development, we mentioned that one before, the country will to develop at the same pace. Then one night, bring the government closer to the people. Of course, it will bring the government nearer to the people. Then number 10, it allows for checks and balances. That is, in the federal system of government, the government tend to, to act as a check on each other. And by acting as a check on each other, it will, to, it will booster federal system of government and also encourage what we call political surety. So that is it. Then we can add number 11 for us. We can say it encourages LD, it encourages LD competition. LD competition. What do you mean by it encourages LD competition? By this, you mean that what that is, the various states or the component units that would exist in the federal system will always compete LDD among themselves. And by so doing, it will it will all go well or it will promote what we call federalism. And at the end of the day, it is going to be a win-win situation for everybody under a federal system of a government. So now let us quickly look at the disadvantages because of our time. The disadvantages, we're going to stop there. The disadvantages of a federalism. The disadvantages of a federalism. Disadvantages of federalism. Disadvantages of a federalism. Number one, threat of secession. Number two, domination of minority. Domination of minority. Number three, uneven development. Number four, 